chucking a four-stroke liquid cool 755 cc parallel twin engine producing 90.5 horsepower and 9,500 rpm and 75 newton meters of torque at 7,250 rpm through a six-speed gearbox and a chain final drive controlled by a ride-by-wire system. Honda sets out into the wild. The Transalp XL750. Fuel is delivered by an EFI from a 16.9-litre tank. Claim consumption by Honda is 23 km per litre, potentially giving you a range of 388.7 km before you are bone dry. We found that the real-world consumption is 24.6 km per litre with mixed riding. Your mileage may vary. The Honda Transalp XL750 rolls on a 21-inch front and an 18-inch rear, wired spoke rim, both wrapped by Metzler Karu Street tyres. The rider is assisted by Honda's traction control. The braking department sees a pair of 310mm floating rotors clamped by dual two-piston Nissin fixed calipers in the front and a single 256mm rotor with a floating one-piston Nissin caliper in the rear. The brakes are supported by a dual-channel ABS that allows ABS to be turned off in the rear. Suspending the Transalp XL750 is a non-adjustable upside-down Showa fork and a preload adjustable mono shock in the rear. A full-color 5-inch TFT screen displays everything the rider needs, including the five riding modes. Standard, Rain, Gravel, User, and Sport. Modes change the dynamics of the machine by influencing engine power output, top control, engine brake, and ABS levels. Other electronic features see the inclusion of Honda's smartphone voice control system and a USB outlet. Under the pillion seat. We'll come to that later. A full LED lighting package comes as standard on the Transalp XL750. An LED headlight, an LED taillight and auto-cancelling LED signals that also comes equipped with an emergency stop signal. Hazard lights come on automatically when the system detects hard braking. Regular servicing is every 12,000 km with 3.6 litres of engine oil with an oil filter replacement. Major servicing with a valve clearance inspection is every 24,000 km. Jake is 1.87 metres tall with a seat height of 800 mm and a curb weight of 208 kilos. Let us show you how he looks on the bike. He's got an upright, relaxed posture. With Mark coming in as a pillion, he felt that it was spacious enough and the pillion seat comfortable. At a combined weight of 170 kilos, the preload adjustable monoshock held up very okay. The turning radius of the bike is small for its class. In our opinion, the Honda Transalp XL750 is an addition to what feels to be the medium-sized adventure trend. More options! Throttle reaction was surprisingly responsive for a throttle-by-wire system. Power delivery was instant and reactive. Nice! She was light in the turns and very flickable. The shocks are a little bouncy for our liking, but it's more than good enough for the daily ride or the not-so-heavy off-roading session. Be careful, if you are going off-road, the XL750 doesn't have protection underneath. We definitely would have preferred if the XL750 came with a fully adjustable suspension system, but as always, third-party options are available. The brakes were bitey and have good feel, just the way we like it. We also would have preferred a main stand and a bigger windshield. Better yet, if it's adjustable. The saddle for both rider and pillion felt comfortable. Right up north with your special other, no problem, 100%.
Here's a weird one that we've experienced on our own machines. The covered port that's meant for the installation of a 12 volt socket that's sold separately. It's a cheap part. Would be better if it just came as stock, right? Then powering a phone on a bus wouldn't be a problem since the USB outlet is underneath the pillion seat. With a price tag of 27,900 Singapore dollars before COE and insurance, not asking for too much, right? We like how the XL750 sounded. Let's have a listen. Not bad, right? We don't feel that aftermarket options are necessary, but they are available if you like them. Check with your local authorities for legal limits. What you don't need clearance from the authorities is our brand new merch. Get yours at tripletree.com. We ship internationally. We found the handlebar height to be a little too low. Easy fix with bar risers. We didn't notice any hit at Stop Go City or highway riding. Very okay! Overall, the Honda Trans Alp XL750 makes for an excellent option for riders who are looking to do some adventure riding with a machine that isn't too heavy and bulky like our Africa Twins. We all call it a skinny AT. <laughs> the XL750 is 20 kilos lighter, but the power she makes is very close to our bikes. Doing 3 horsepower and 22 newton meters of torque less. Still, more than enough power to pull you and your luggage along, with or without a pillion. No problem. Newer riders should start off with smaller machines. She's a 755cc machine after all. Experienced riders can expect the reliability of a Honda with reasonable maintenance prices. We got the Honda Trans Alp XL750 from Honda Singapore, but as with all our reviews, they do not have control over our content, allowing us to bring you true and unbiased opinions. With that, I'm Winston, and see you on the road.